Hi, I'm Wendy Sweet. Bill Fairman. And we are so glad to have you with us today. I have a, a question that a lot of people ask us, but I'm going to ask you to give you the opportunity to give an answer. How's that sound? It's always <laughs> nice when I have an opportunity. <laughs> That's right. To give an answer. So, Bill, there's there's a lot of people that ask us questions about getting into to the fund and right. what that looks like when you get into a fund. So, it, it, I think somebody asked us recently, how often does that happen? Our answer was, hopefully, every day. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't happen every day, but it, it'd be nice if it Sometimes did. Sometimes we get more than one day in one day, too, which is well, always nice. But t talk about a little know, bit of how that works. Well, with our fund, uh, I like to say everything happens on the quarter mm -hmm. because we give out our statements on the quarter. Those are, that are taking income from it, they get their checks on the quarter. Everything happens on the quarter. Does that mean you can only put money in at the quarter? No. As a matter of fact, you might miss the boat if you wait till the quarter. Mm. The way most funds work, is that you have a separate subscription account. When someone wants to put money in the fund, that money first goes into a subscription account. There's a couple of things that happen there. Number one. We celebrate. <laughs> Woo! After we celebrate, <laughs> you're not making any money. <laughs> How's that for a deal? <laughs> so the this, this subscription account. Oh, look is at really that line forming. <laughs> The subscription account is like a holding account. And like I said, you can't start as a fund member until right. the quarter starts. So why do you have a subscription account? Well, if someone puts a chunk of change in the fund that hasn't been working in the fund, what does that do for everyone else that's in the fund? Kind of dilutes what they're making, right? right? Because your percentage, your yield is based on, amounts under management. Mm. So you take all the money that you've made throughout the quarter, you subtract all the expenses, and then you divide it into the amount of money that you have under management. Gotcha. Well, if I have a big chunk of change that is added, it hasn't been working to get an income, mm -hmm. then it dilutes the yield for everyone else. Right. So we put it in this subscription account and we wait for the quarter to start yet. But that doesn't mean it's never going to earn any money we are always utilizing money in the subscription accounts right. when they come in. It just doesn't start into the fund until the quarter ends. So what we do is we guarantee we, it, it's like a temporary note. We pay you 8% when we use it, not when it goes in, but mm -hmm. when we use it. So mm -hmm. I have money in this account. I have loans that are coming up due. I'll move money from that account to the operating account when I've moved it over and we pay you 8% until the end of that quarter. And then you're just in line with everybody else that's in there. At least that money is working for you and it adds to your balance and it, and it goes from there. So at the end of the quarter, bona fide, and I'm in the pool of people that are. Yeah. So let's money. say you put in a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Well, you're going to earn 8% on that hundred thousand dollars from the time I start using it in a deal. So when your quarter starts, you may start with a hundred thousand or maybe 101,000 to mm -hmm. start with. Oh, wow. Even more than I thought <laughs> because I'm able to take the interest that I earn. Yes. And, and it will add, add, to, add to your balance. Gotcha. Unless of course you've chosen to take money out at the end of each quarter. And get paid. Right. Like, again, you're not going to get that 101,000 or you're not gonna get that 1,000 because you hadn't been in a quarter yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the following quarter, you'll then get you'll whatever get you get plus the 100. <laughs> Geez, that was easy to explain. Wasn't it? <laughs> All right. So a lot of people ask me <laughs> while we're on that subject, what if I want to add more money? What yeah. if I put in a hundred and I want to add another 50, you know, two months from now. Right. Well, we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You still have to get a subscription booklet right. signed because it's now a new investment. Now it'll go through that same structure. It'll go into the subscription account where it may or may not earn money until we when we use it, it will earn money, but it may not earn money uh, until we use it. And then from there, it will go through that same space or, or line that it's in. And then when the quarter starts, it'll be added to your current account. Can you have several accounts? Yes, you may. <laughs> so for example, you could put a several IRA accounts in there. You'll have two or three accounts. They'll have different account numbers, obviously but you have to keep those separately, especially if they're IRAs. Right. They, they, they can't be mingled. They have to be, have to be separate. Right. And so you'll get several statements 
if you're receiving that money quarterly, you'll get several checks or ACH right. deposits, right. Uh, that type of I don't thing. even think we do checks anymore unless it's going to an IRA, right? Yeah. We do all ACH now. Pretty, pretty much. But, money in the bank. But, <laughs> uh, but that's the way it works. And, and it, we're doing that for the benefit of the members. And you will be a member and you will thank us because it will benefit you at some point. Right. Uh, not putting you in right away. Right. So, you know, do they really have to read that whole yes. private placement? Oh, it's, it's like bathroom reading, but it's important, isn't it? Come on. Everyone likes reading actuarial tables. That's right. <laughs> One of the grass grows too. <laughs> it's very important that you read the private placement memorandum, the subscription booklet, because the subscription booklet also acts as an operating agreement. When you get into any fund, you are becoming a member of an LLC. Right. And you own a piece of that LLC. So that operating agreement is part of the operating agreement for the LLC. Right. Um, if you have a tax advisor, a, a investment advisor, an attorney, you know, make sure you look it over because those documents are going to describe everything about that fund, mm -hmm. what they invest in, what their long-term strategy is, what the waterfall is and the waterfall means in the event <laughs> of a wind down or some kind of catastrophic event, mm -hmm. how everybody gets paid, right? Is there going to be leverage mm -hmm. in the fund? That's now, important we, to know. We talked earlier about having a tax consequence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of having your IRA leveraged. Well, you couldn't let pe people in a fund can be leveraged, right? There are credit facilities while it will help out a fund. Mm -hmm. It can also be a detriment to the fund if it, uh, you have the wrong type of credit environment. Right. So, you know what? We're going to talk about fund leverage at another time because this is going to be a Are you longer. getting scared? No, it's just a much longer story. <laughs> and I, I know some people have to eat dinner now. Yeah. It's, but the, the PPMs are very important to read because yeah. it has vital information on the management, how the fund is set up, the, the strategies, how what everyone gets paid. constitutes a quorum. That's important. It's basically telling you 40 different reasons why you should not invest in yeah, the fund. That's true too. <laughs> but you, you have to know all the consequences that's right. uh, involved. That's and right. when you invest in a fund, you're, trusting that the managers know what they're doing. You have to do your due diligence. And the first part of that is reading that uh, PPM. Right, right. Right. Not just skimming through it, making sure you've gone through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So I know we started off with how do you put money in and we ended up doing something else. <laughs> well, that was important. <laughs> but that's typically how we roll. We never stay on topic. <laughs> we just move along. Squirrel. <laughs> So thank you so much for yes. joining us on our next show. We're going to show you how to use guardrails <laughs> so we don't go down any rabbit trails. Yeah. Well, right? that would be a show that would last. Forever. So don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> um, like, like us, us. Mm -hmm. follow us. All of those. Yes. Yeah, so right? our, our website, carolinahardmoney.com. <laughs> if you have any questions and uh, you're able to get to all of our investment material, uh, just click on the investor tab. Yeah. We'd love to share it with you. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us again. I really had an awesome time. I know Wendy did as well. Woohoo! So if you like <laughs> what you heard and you want to see more, what do we do? You can hit one of these. I feel like the hippy dippy weather girl because we've got a green screen going on. So we could have a cold front moving in from Virginia or right. <laughs> oh, come on. That's funny. I don't care who you are. So, you can pick any of these other shows. We have some here. We have some here. We have some here. Just pick one, test it out, right? Yeah. Also, uh, subscribe, like, and our uh, website is easy. www. <laughs> That's a lot of Ws. <laughs> CarolinaHardMoney.com. Tell all your friends. <laughs> Thanks.